Hi everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. I am going to show you one of the most powerful, I think it is the powerful, most absolute um, HFT, HFT-like, high-frequency trading-like metric out there, but let alone, this is the absolute number one reason why I trade um, cryptocurrency. So what this is related around is a YouTube video I put up on my channel, Yacht, on uh, Quant Labs, uh, this one right here, it's called, uh, is this the closest to high frequency uh, trading HFT with, uh, I don't know, but it, it's it's kind of gone bonkers, but yeah, that's okay. Hey everybody, Brian here from Quant Labs. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. shut myself up. Okay, so is this the closest to high frequency trading HFT with a crypto trading bot? I've also put up uh, some follow-up videos, but this is the absolute number one thing you need to look out for. So this script I'm about to run, uh, oops, that's one of my other bots. Oh well, we should get a sample of what it looks like. Um, let's see, okay. So what I'm gonna show you here is something called liquid BTC. This is uh, actual orders put on uh, on uh, Binance. This is the most one of the most biggest trusted exchanges in the world. Um, you can go into spoofing. You can go into quote stuffing. But what you can see here, this is right off the exchange. The confirmed execution, confirmed orders on Binance, and. Uh, this is not quote stuffing. This is not uh, uh, anything or related around. This is the real ex executed orders. So what we have here is these are the number of buys. These are the number of sells. So you can use this for direction, uh, market direction on um, what's going on in as a snapshot in the exchange live uh, with real orders confirmed. Now, when it comes to other exchanges like CME, uh, whatever else out there that offer high frequency trading. Uh, this is the only asset classes of its kind, the only, probably one of the only exchanges of this kind that enables you to get this data uh, through the futures market on Binance and be able to get actual executed orders at a particular time frame. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and modified and enhanced the script to set. So you're getting, in this case, 18 real buys and 18 sells at that time that this script was run. On top of that, it will give you, I could get, and that it's using 100 um, entries or rows that are given, so I'm able to get uh, the average number of quantity that's bought, the average price that is, is bought at, and on top of that, uh, on the sell side, I also get the same thing, average quantity, an average price. I, I have, let me just run this again so this is not smoke and mirrors. So I can use this to confirm in my bot what is going on in terms of what's really going on in the exchange. And as I said, this will factor out the bid and ask that most people will use and think that their genius is on. What you need to understand when it comes to buy and ask on an exchange, on a, uh, on a broker, forex, stock, whatever, that, that those are not real quotes. Th th those are just that, quotes. So you can get algorithms, you can get humans, you can get automated, whatever, that will put in quotes and asking for the price or making out as if it's going to place an order. But it, those does not, does not mean that they are actually confirmed, executed orders. Okay, so they could be doing something called spoofing, they could be doing something called, uh, what's the other one? I can't remember. But they can do this to throw off any trading algorithm out there that's following the price. In my case, Bitcoin against USDT or Tether. Uh, and they would think that it's going to throw off my bot and the performance on what I watch. In this case, BTC against Tether. Um, so... Because of that, I now have the way to get actual confirmed orders on the exchange instead of just stuff that's just quoted and that may not be actual confirmed orders. That will throw off your bot performance. 
because if it's going to take a trade, it could throw off the, the trade itself uh, and lose money. Really, really critical. I guarantee you a lot of people out there will use a third-party service or some other exchange thinking that they're okay. Unless they are able to get confirmed orders right off the exchange that's actually executed and liquidated on the exchange, anything else is trash. Because when I say that, that means that you're going to have participants in that exchange doing exactly what I just said. To be able to say, um, I'm putting a quote out there for the buying X amount of quantity on Bitcoin or selling on the number of uh, Bitcoin but yet I don't put the order through, and that's gonna throw off your market. Market makers do this, a lot of illicit uh, market participants do this, uh, whale traders do this, uh, and they'll just put out a number of big orders to make people think that the price was about to move, and it doesn't, but yet uh, they do that a couple of times to shake out the weak players, and then put an order in, and then they gain off the price because they know they're shaking off uh, the competition that's watching that price. So when you want to watch only what's executed on the exchange, um, that's the real way to trade because now you're, you're taking out those kind of uh, bid and ask quotes. So here, um, as I said, this is why I trade only uh, on crypto right now. Okay, I'm only trading on um, crypto because some exchanges, I don't know all, I don't know, I don't care, um, that offer this. And when you want to be able to get actual orders on the exchange, um, you, like let's say the CME, you would usually uh, have to go and pay out an exorbitant amount of month per, per month on the CME to get this kind of information of actually how much is being bought at what price and on what's the average quantity so you can determine what is actually being bought or sold on the exchange and you pay a lot of money for that. Also, um, a lot of the big players, the institutional players at like the hedge funds and the HFT and the banks usually will pump these kind of orders through the um, through dark pools. So the dark pools will, not, uh, will take out who's actually buying what and, and that um, enables them to hide their orders on, on who's doing what. So with this type of scripting, I'm able to see if there's actual big orders in there. And I can see that here on the average, you know, 0.89%, per, uh, percent, that's almost a full Bitcoin. So there are people selling off Bitcoin right now. Or I could see that on the buy side as well and be able to see what's determining. But what really matters is the number of buys and the number of sells that will determine the, the price at that time. So let me just run this again. So really important to be able to distinguish that, uh, to, to you know, to, to, to put yourself a cut above the, the other, we'll call them amateurs on this, because now I can then, before I take a trade, I wanna know how much is being bought and sold on the exchange before I take the trade. And it's not spoofed, it's not fake, it's real. Um, and I can also use the same information on when I do put on a position, I know when to, to get out because I'm able to determine on the number of buys and sells. And if I take on a buy or a long and I see that the number of sales are draw or the number of buys are dropping off and the sales are increasing, that's when I know to get out. And that's the first thing that I'll do to get out. Really important to know that because I've been playing around with different metrics, different types of moving averages different types of RSI and da 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 but this will is exactly what you want without having to pay extra for it on Binance and again that's why I use this so this will be part of my uh, signaling service to make it a hundred percent reliable now um, and uh, that's that so let me also talk about the oscillator this is now going from a bot checking on uh, on uh, you know on a uh, on a uh, basically on a uh, uh, you know a minute by minute or this this is in real time what's being executed and reason I'm calling it an oscillator which it really is this will take out pretty well even if even if Bitcoin um, was telling somebody like this yesterday is that even though uh, most people will put on a position. In let's say Bitcoin, whatever, it doesn't matter what you're buying, a Forex pair or whatever. The thing is, is that 
you're going against probability. Um, and from what I've been studying over the last two days, uh, really, what's really important to factor in is you put on a position, you want to make sure it's going to go up. And this will help determine and confirm um, if the market is actually going up because you have an exorbitant amount of buys versus the sells. So that's one way to um, protect your trade. On top of that, usually most people hang on to a trade too long. Um, and I've got now new metrics in place that I can use to show pretty well any form of weakness on a price on an open position. Okay, so that's really important. So most people will hang on to a trade, even though if the price and the position showing some sort of weakness, most people still hang on to that position, especially if you're human-based because they're just watching charts. They don't see this on the tick level, which this is. Um, they will uh, probably lose, and they or they'll not get the maximum profit they can get. So because you're looking out for the first sign of weakness on a price, you just get out of dodge on that. You close the position and you exit because then people will say, well, uh, what happens if the position goes up even further? That's true, but on your next trade, you're watching for that next leg up. Because you're doing this on a tick level, um, you can uh, operate that way, and it doesn't matter what direction it is and other metrics that will impact you. You're only watching uh, Bitcoin in this case. Now, I've talked about Bitcoin and other, um, other uh, 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 coins. I'll just say this. Bitcoin's the biggest. It's, it's the most traded. Uh, on Binance, it's, I think, on average, about $3 billion a day. Pretty hard to manipulate, um, and you really can't manipulate what you put an actual real order on, now that I can see it, now that I can choose to see if I want to trade it. Um, so that's really important to know that. I've also looked at other coins like Ethereum. I've looked at other coins like Bitcoin Cash is now doing well. Um, and uh, other coins like Tezos, which is doing, has done quite well, Chainlink, and Litecoin. So the big four that I've traditionally have watched is Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Ethereum because of their volume. But now what's been happening when the markets have gone flat among those four, you get two other coins that can sometimes be bigger trades by volume over a 24-hour period, bigger than Bitcoin, or sorry, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin as well. So those two coins, Tezos and Chainlink, are going to be important to watch moving forward and have been. Um, but you also have to be on the lookout for other coins that are coming about in the near term in a couple of months that will start to outperform the big four. Um, and then over time, I'm sure, and I've seen it many times with other coins, that Tezos and Chainlink may drop off in volume. And those other smaller altcoins will come in to, to replace those coins. So I'm able to watch those. But right now, I'm just building this oscillator only for Bitcoin because, I mean, let's face it, Bitcoin's the big the big kahuna in all this, and that's what I watch. So this is an oscillator. Right now, I'm only interested in watching on um, Binance. Oh, sorry, on, only on Bitcoin. I might build a second one for Ethereum because those are consistently the big ones. And I only say that because doing this type of trading and doing this type of uh, watching on Binance, they do limit you on the number of requests you can put out. They're very, very generous on it. But um, you don't want to kind of overstep those boundaries when you're watching other coins. So for now, for sure, I'm going to do this with, with Bitcoin most likely I'll add the second one on Ethereum, and these are two oscillators I'm watching, regardless of uh, direction they go, regardless or direction of the overall market, because now I can. it doesn't matter. If Bitcoin goes up and it hits a certain metric, it'll put on a position. If it, if it does well um, and it starts to show signs of weakness after that position, as I said, it gets out. So I'm hoping that this will be a little, well, hopefully a lot more profitable, but only trading... On Bitcoin and Ethereum. The other reason why I like trading right now on Bitcoin is because um, with Bitcoin um, you can still trade in the spot market with 0.001 Bitcoin as, as a minimum quantity. It used to be 0.01. So now I just put a third zero in there. That minimizes your uh, Bitcoin 
minimum order where it used to be around five or ten dollars down to about a buck. So when you're testing this out, you can put in minimum bets, especially if they're going to be tiny. And if you know that uh, those uh, that that bot in this case, this one, the strategy does work. I can scale up those position sizes. Same set for um, Ethereum as well. So I'm going to test this, and I just want to show you that this is a really, really important metric um, to be able to capture what is being actually traded on the exchange in real, not spoofed or whatever, or fake out, whatever you want to call it. So that's that. If you want to know more, go to quantlabs.net. Get the free books, the PDFs, and get on the DVD. Because if this turns out, you're going to start to see all my prices go up over and out. I don't not don't ask me about technical as well, because I ain't going to tell you how it's done. And this data also comes out of Binance Futures as I ended as well later.